This is video number 14 in our Topics in Quantum Mechanics series from digital-university.org. In this um, video, we want to talk about the four-way transform of the Dirac delta function. And that in turn will give us the tools to take a closer look at the properties of the momentum Eig operator eigenfunctions as well as the linear momentum uh, operator eigenfunctions. So what we're going to do is first talk a little bit about what the four-way transform pairs are and also a reminder the playlist for all the videos that we're producing in this series the playlist for them is at the website at digital-university.org. Okay here's an expression for a typical four-way transform pair. Try to get them in better focus here. Alright, let's just look what's inside the integral here. Here we have some function g of k. We're integrating with respect to k. And this function is being multiplied by another function, obviously an exponential function, where e is to the i k x. i, of course, is the square root of negative 1. Now, as far as the integral is concerned, x, x is a variable, but not for this integral. We're integrating with respect to k, so x is just being treated as a constant. So imagine that we perform the integration, integrating with respect to k, then we insert the limits of the integral, so any k expressions that we have are gone, and all we're going to have left is then is x. So once we do the integration, we're going to have some function that contains x now. So we're going to have some function f of x. Now here at the bottom in this integral, we have e to the i k x, but we're integrating with respect to x, and we have our other function f of x here. So it's not too difficult to imagine that when we integrate this, integrating with respect to x, then after that we go ahead and substitute our integral limits in, then all the x's are going to be gone, and we're going to, only going to have k left. So we're going to get some, some function out of this that's going to have the variable k in it. So we get, we're going to get some function of k. But what's interesting about the four-way transform pair is this. Let's go back to here. We're integrating this here, and we have some function g of k. This is going to give us some function f of x. Well then, if I use the f of x in this integral, if I use this f of x that I've obtained using this g of k, use it f of x in this integral, that then in turn will give us the same g of k that we used originally. So that's why these are called a four-way transform pair. And now what we want to do is um, think about how we can use this to derive the four-way transform of the Dirac delta function. So here we can say we'll write down a four-way transform pair f of x that equals 1 over the square root of 2 pi and we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity g of k e to the i k x dk and then we also have its four-way transform pair In this now we have this f of x goes into here, e to the minus i k x dx. Now suppose that we had, for the function f of x, suppose we had this. Say we'll write it like x minus a. 
your act delta function. So let's substitute this into here and see what kind of a function comes out of it. So this equals 1 over square root of 2 pi, the integral delta x minus a e to the minus i k x dx. And of course the limits are the same. Now this is zero everywhere because of our direct delta function here. It's zero everywhere except when x is equal to a. So that would give us here for this expression e to the minus i k a. Now a of course is just some constant. i is a constant. Let's go to negative 1. And here k is being treated as a constant because we're integrating with respect to x. So since it's a constant, we can take it to the outside of the integral. So it will equal 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus i k a. And then remember from our previous videos, that this is 1. So this is just being times 1. So we can get rid of that. And there's our function g of k. So what we have then is that if f of x is this function, we said originally that when we integrate this, we're going to get some function g of k. Well, when the particular function is this, our g of k function is this right here. Now, let's go back to the top when we have our four-way transform pair right here. Here we use a particular value of f of x, this. And that gives us a g of k. Now, if we take that same value g of k, this, and put it <clears throat> into this integral, that will give us back then the same function f of x we use down here, which is this. So what we're saying then is that if this, this particular g of k, goes into here, the function f of x that comes out of it will be the direct delta function, which is what we used in here. So let's make some room and do that then. Right now we're saying, OK, g of k, its corresponding g of k is 1 over the square root of 2 pi e to the minus i k a. And that is when we have f of x is just the direct delta function. So Let's go start with this. 1 over the square root of 2 pi. And our integral, minus infinity to plus infinity of g of k. That's this. So you have 1 over the square root of 2 pi times e 
to the minus i k a times e to the i k x d k. And that has to equal this. So here's our expression. Now let's see if we can clean this up just a little bit. First, let's just start and consider where we're at. This is our four-way transform pair, the general expressions. For f of x, we put this in, and the g of k that we got out was this. Now, what the four-way transform pair tells us is, all right, well, if I take have a certain function f of x, in that case, in our particular case, this, and we get a function g of k that comes out of it, this, if I put that same function g of k into here, that's going to give us the same f of x that we used originally, which is this. So we end up with delta x minus a, our direct delta function, equals putting in this g of k right here, specifically for this one. So what comes out of it? This is equal to 1 over 2 pi integral. And here we're multiplying these together, so we have e to the i x minus a k dk. And that's equal to this. So here you see, what we end up with then is an integral expression for the direct delta function. Put this in better focus. All we did to get to this step was just we're multiplying two exponentials here. So that can be written like this. and then what we have is an integral representation now for the Dirac delta function. Um, very easy to derive, just simply using our general formula for what constitutes a four-way transform pair. Now what we're going to do in the next integral, or in the next uh, video, is apply this to the apply this formula to the momentum operator eigenfunctions. And we will also have a general discussion about the position operator eigenfunctions. Now remember that for the for the position operator eigenfunctions, they themselves are Dirac delta functions. Well, we were writing this not as delta x minus a, but to use the same symbol, symbols as before, we had uh, direct delta function of x minus lambda. Um, and this now, of course, is just in one dimension because for all of our uh, videos, for the moment anyway, we're just simply considering a particle moving anywhere on the x-axis. So we're just considering one-dimensional cases, um, at least right now for our present video series. But okay, come back. Join us in the next video, and what we're going to do then is apply this formula to the momentum operator eigenfunctions. And once we gain that background, we're going to discuss in more detail the position operator eigenfunctions, which are already direct delta functions. Also remember that in each case, for here and here, 
the corresponding eigenvalues are not just discrete values, but they can take on um, a whole spectrum. They're behaving as if they are variable by themselves. And again, we'll discuss that in more detail in the next video. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion. What we want to um, home in on is the direct normalization of these momentum operator eigenfunctions. Now we have the tools to do it.